Dee here from Wenatchee River Institute. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to look at the life cycle of a plant. We are going to start off small and start off with a lima bean dissection of a seed and then look at the different stages of plants. Come join us. To know more about plants, we need to start off with the seed. Today we're going to be dissecting a lima bean seed or taking it apart. You should have soaked your lima bean seed overnight in water. You'll notice one is larger than the other. This one has absorbed the water and it will make it easier to take apart. Before we begin, you could observe with your hand lens the differences between the two and what do you notice? Here, when we look at this one that was soaked overnight in water, you'll notice that this top layer looks like it's, it's wrinkly and it can come apart easily. With your tweezers, you're gonna gently lift it apart. Sometimes you'll be able to gently pop out your seed. This is called the seed coat. What do you notice about the seed coat? What does it remind you of? For me, it reminds me of skin. And it is like skin because it protects the seed. And then you'll notice here that the, there's a split and gently take it apart and you'll notice two halves. These halves are called the cotyledons. In the cotyledon is your food storage or the endosperm. If you look on one of these halves, you'll notice this worm-like structure that is called the embryo or the baby plant. This is the plant that is going to grow. It will root down into the soil and then using this food storage, the endosperm, it will become a new plant. Here you'll see a little bit part of the leaves and these cotyledons will become its first leaves as well. Here from another lima bean, you can see the embryo. This again is where it will root down and these will be its baby leaves. Again, we have your seed coat, your two cotyledons, which has the endosperm, the food storage, and your embryo, which is your baby plant ready to grow. Now that we have dissected our lima bean seed and seen the parts of a seed, we are going to look at our next stage in the life cycle of a plant, which is seed germination and the beginning of it starting to sprout up. Germination is the process by which the embryo emerges from its cracked seed to grow and become a plant. For germination to occur, you need water, enough oxygen, and the right temperature. Once the embryo emerges from the seed, it is going to start to grow its roots and a stem that will want to find the sunlight and will need to be planted in soil to gather the necessary nutrients needed to grow. This sprout is the beginning of the life cycle of a plant in a growing season. When a seed is planted in soil and receives water, it begins to swell or get bigger and germinate. And within a few days, the first sprout of new growth emerges from the soil. The roots are reaching down to absorb water and nutrients from the soil. The shoot will come out, which is also its stem, to find the sunlight. And the first pair of leaves will start to appear to make their own food from the sun. Hi everyone, my name is Elisa. Now that a seed has sprouted, we can call it a seedling. And a seedling has three main parts, the roots, the stem, and the leaves. Just like Dee said, the roots nourish the plant. It brings up nutrients and the stem is the channels and full of highways where the water and the nutrients pass up through. The leaves that the seed is growing or has grown are gonna capture the sun's energy and that will create sugars for the plant to feed itself and continue to grow for years. Our friend the seedling is gonna grow wider and taller and eventually it'll start to produce flowers. Just like this tree has. 
And these flowers will attract pollinators with their scent and their colors. The pollinators and the flowers will work together to move this plant forward to the next step in its life cycle. Hi, Brandon here. Plants develop brightly colored and fragrant flowers to attract pollinators. Some pollinators you might know are bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, but other insects act as pollinators too, like wasps and ants. Even the wind can be a pollinator. These insects are getting food from the flowers in the form of pollen and nectar. When these pollinators move from flower to flower, they are spreading pollen between the plants. When the pollen from one plant's flower gets into another plant's flower, this is when pollination happens. From there, the plant will begin to grow a fruit that contains its seeds. Some fruit is edible and some is not, but all fruit protects the seeds as they develop. Edible fruit is one clever way that plants spread their seeds. The seeds are able to pass through the animal's digestive system where they're finally returned back to the earth in a little pile of fertilizer or poop to begin their life cycle again. Well, thanks for joining us on our journey through the plant's life cycle. Until next time.